Hi, in this video I'm taking a look at the FIO E12 Montblanc portable headphone amplifier. This is it attached here underneath uh, my iPod 7th generation. And before I show you the amplifier by itself, I just wanted to show it to you sort of set up so you can get a sense of how it is. This is a really good headphone amplifier for the price. It's only about $130, yet it can power pretty much any headphone on the market. It's um, sort of geared towards having a lot of power and being able to power almost any headphone that you throw at it. So let's take a closer look at this. So I have to say this Fio E12 is really a complete package and I'm pretty impressed with all that you get with it. By the way, for pricing and availability, check the description field below while I will include a link to where you can pick one of these up for yourself. So it comes with everything that you see here and it's pretty much everything you need to get started with a nice, powerful, portable headphone setup. So let's go through some of the stuff that it comes with. First of all, this is the box, and inside the box is the instruction manual. And, uh, you know, pretty nice packaging. It also comes with a little carrying case that the amp goes into. It also comes with um, some little rubber feet, which, as you can see, I have installed here on the top of the amp, which I will talk about in a bit. And then it comes with a micro USB cable this is actually to charge it and it's pretty unique with this amplifier you can actually charge it with your ipad uh, power charger here and uh, it actually works quite well with the ipad one it wants this amplifier can be charged via usb either connected to your computer or any usb charger however it charges much faster with a high power usb charger such as the ipad one which is i believe two amps it'll charge much faster using this so you just take the USB micro uh, cable that it came with and plug one end into the iPad charger and then the other end goes into the amp right here and that charges it up. It has an in The amp has an internal battery. It also comes with a uh, short mini to mini cable. It also comes with four of these high quality sturdy bands which enable you to attach it to your device. And what's really nice is they have two different sizes. So they have a large one and a small one. So depending on the size of your device and what fits, you can pick the appropriate black band. Uh, so that's really nice to include these. So this is the amplifier up close. And as you can see, I've got four rubber feet installed on top of mine. And I sort of like to do that because I attach the iPod directly to it like that and it puts a little bit of space in between so that you're not doing metal on metal and you know ending up scratching the back of your iPod or whatever. Some people like to put the feet on the bottom of the device so that when, when they put it down on a table, it's not scratching. But I have found, for me anyway, it works best to have the feet there in between the device and the amplifier. The fit and finish of this amplifier is really quite nice. It seems very sturdy and it feels great in the hand. Uh, it's kind of metal aluminum construction. So let me go ahead and turn it on here and you can see there's a blue LED there that shows that it's on. There's another red LED here that will turn on when it needs to be charged. Also when it's charging that will blink and when it's done charging it will stop blinking and turn to a solid red. Right here is the headphone jack, uh, the mini you know, eighth inch headphone jack and right here is the line input. On this side you actually have a bass boost switch which is uh, quite, quite a nice feature. And then here's the power jack where you would charge it up. It's quite thin, it's about maybe um, twice the thickness of an iPhone or something like that. And it's also not too heavy, but it does feel sturdy at the same time. So on this side, you've got the gain switch, um, zero and 16. And in my experience on zero, it works perfectly fine for uh, the headphones that I have. Certainly if you have something that has a higher impedance, such as you know Bayer Dynamic uh, DT880s in the 600 ohm, or maybe the Sennheiser HD 800s that are 300 ohm, you might want to try the high gain. But in my experience, just normal gain uh, works plenty fine for me. And although, and I, I have, however, tried the high gain, and it sounds perfectly fine. Um, you know, not very much noise or anything. A lot of times the gain switches add a lot of noise, but not the case with uh, not the case with this. Um, so pretty impressive there. Then you also have a crossfeed switch, and the crossfeed sort of is supposed to make headphones sound a little bit more natural and more like speakers uh, by sort of mixing the left and the right channel slightly uh, so that uh, it mimics sort of room ambience and stuff like that and you get the reflections and 
of you know the right ear and the left ear and the left ear and the right ear. So on this amplifier, I don't really use the crossfeed very much uh, just because I prefer, I generally prefer not to use those. Some people really like it though, and it does provide a less fatiguing sound, but it, but it also tends to sort of compress the sound stage a little bit. So I have it off on this amp. I'd have to say that this amp is geared more towards headphones than it is to in-ear monitors, although you can run in-ear monitors perfectly well with it. If you have very sensitive in-ear monitors, however, you might hear a little bit of noise floor, a little bit of hiss uh, on very sensitive in-ear monitors because it's really more optimized to use for headphones requiring a little bit more power. When I plug in my Odyssey LCD2s, for instance, I don't hear any hiss or anything. It's dead silent and it sounds really good also. Uh, I really like the bass boost as well. It just provides a more bassy sound for some songs that is uh, you know, really enjoyable. And again, this amplifier really can run pretty much anything you throw at it in terms of headphones. Um, so whether you have headphones that require a lot of power or headphones that don't require a lot of power, this amplifier is quite versatile. And I really think for the price, it can't be beat. Again, it's only $130, so it's quite impressive at this price. Now granted, it may not have quite the resolution of some higher end amplifiers that cost a lot more money but you would probably have to spend three or four times as much to get an amplifier this powerful that sounds this good or better. So I think this one is going to be really hard to beat in this price range, especially. The sound on it tends to be a bit warm, which I really like. So not super analytical and, um, you know, the highs aren't super harsh or anything like that. The sound stage could be a little bit better, but at this price point, I'm not complaining. Um, certainly the sound stage is pretty good. Uh, it doesn't feel real closed in or anything when you're listening to it, uh, you know, although maybe it could be slightly wider, but really no complaints at this price range again. In the last couple of years, Fio has really made an impact on the portable headphone market by coming out with headphone amplifiers that are inexpensive yet perform very well for their price point. And so this Fio E12 Mont Blanc, which is currently their flagship model, their highest uh, end portable headphone amp, is no exception to that. For the price, it is really a great sounding headphone amplifier and it seems quite well built. I'm really enjoying this amplifier quite a bit. This has been my look at the FIO E12 Mont Blanc portable headphone amplifier. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.